Welcome back to my twice yearly solar and battery stats update and we've got a lot to update you on this time because there have been some changes which I'll go into later. And am I any closer to breaking even on my solar investment? But as always, I need to start with a reminder of my setup. Up on the roof, I have 10 390 watt Trina Vertex panels, giving me a peak of 3.9 kilowatts of generation. That feeds back to a solar edge string inverter in my garage and limits the output to 3.68 kilowatts. Also stuck on that same wall is my Give Energy All-in-One, providing 13.5 kilowatt hours of energy and a decent six kilowatts of power output. Above that is the Give Energy Energy gateway that takes me off grid during power cuts and keeps the lights on when all of my neighbours are sitting there in the dark. I've also got an older Give Energy AC coupled inverter with an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery on there. And sitting out in my garden is my ever faithful air source heat pump, providing me with heating and hot water. Now included in my initial investment for which I am tracking the return are the solar panels and the batteries. The heat pump is not part of that investment because it's not there to save me money. It's there to heat my home and that's what I bought it for. The solar and the batteries on the other hand, well their primary purpose is to save me money on my energy bills. My heat pump causes my energy bills to go up. The solar and the batteries help bring those bills back down again. So that's what we're tracking here. By how much did my solar and batteries reduce those potential bills over the time that I've had them installed? If I add up all of those savings every month, how much has that come to so far and how much has that eaten into my original investment? I said that there had been some changes this year and this is the first one, a pre-owned Tesla Model 3. We already had an MG4 EV, but we got rid of our diesel Dacia Duster and replaced it with the Tesla. So of course, we're immediately going to need more energy to charge two EVs. So our demand is increasing. But because we got the Tesla, that meant we could also switch tariffs from the regular Octopus Go to Intelligent Octopus Go, because now we have a vehicle that supports that tariff. Of course, I'm tracking how much energy our EV charger uses. And you can see here that in 2024, we used 3,094 kilowatt hours at home to charge our car. But in 2025, that went up massively to 3,945 kilowatt hours. We only got the Tesla halfway through the year, so I expect 2026 to be even higher. Regular Octopus Go gave me five hours of off-peak energy per night at 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour. I could use those five hours to charge my car, charge my home batteries, run the dishwasher, washing machine, all those sorts of things. During the day, I would power my home from the batteries until they ran out. And at that point, I'd have to pay for energy at peak rates. Intelligent Octopus Go, by comparison, gives me six hours of off-peak energy per night at seven pence per kilowatt hour. So immediately before I've even started charging the cars, I'm clearly better off here. But the thing about calculating return on investment for solar and batteries is that they pay for themselves more quickly when energy prices are higher. So my energy rates reducing could actually slow down how quickly I get my money back on them. But then don't forget that extra hour of off-peak every night. And also, whenever I plug a car in to charge, Intelligent Octopus Go could give me extra bonus off-peak hours. Using Home Assistant, I can automate my home batteries to charge up whenever I get those bonus off-peak hours. This means that in winter, on this Intelligent tariff, it is even less likely that my batteries will run out than before. My batteries are now providing a greater protection against pulling from the grid at peak rates. And every time these batteries help me avoid pulling from the grid at peak rates, they save me a chunk of cash. So if you're interested in switching to a smart tariff like Intelligent Octopus Go, then please consider using my link, speaktothegeek.co.uk forward slash energy, and we'll both get £50 once your switch is completed. 2025 was also my sunniest year on record, and I generated 4,202 kilowatt hours of energy from my panels. That is about 14% more than the previous year where I generated just 3,582. And whilst there's not a direct correlation, the BBC were reporting that 2025 was the hottest year on record and warmer weather does usually mean more sunshine. It's spreadsheet time. And because of these changes, we're going to need to update the spreadsheet's parameters, starting with my annual demand. Previously, I had a prediction in there of 13,527 kilowatt hours, 
but the actual real demand for 2025 was 13,888 kilowatt hours. Now for the estimated annual export, I'd got that at quite a low 750 kilowatt hours based on the 2023 data. In 2024, we exported 1,836 kilowatt hours and in 2025, we exported over 3,600 kilowatt hours. Now, when the export rate is much higher than the off-peak import rate, you are incentivized to dump as much to the grid as possible. And if you saw my early summer challenge video where I was trying very hard to get a negative energy bill, then you'll know that I took to dumping excess energy from my batteries most evenings before charging up again cheaply off-peak. That means my exported energy for 2025 is artificially inflated. So what I've done is pick a value of 2000 kilowatt hours for what I think is a reasonable export in 2026. And that's important for our predictions. So that's the 2000 kilowatt hours of predicted future annual export filled in there. I've reduced the estimated split between peak and off peak energy. If I didn't have a battery or solar from 75% down to 70%, because now I can use the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. If I didn't have batteries or solar, then I'd still get that extra hour of off-peak per day for my whole home. The next two items for annual grid draw and peak split are automatically pulled in from 2025 data. So let's go and take a look at that. So here is my massive spreadsheet giving me the full breakdown month by month of the energy that I've used, generated and exported. I just fill in the yellow columns at the end of each month and out pops an estimated saving compared to what I would have paid if I didn't have batteries and solar, and that's in that final column there. All of this data feeds into my main table. And here's the main table. Regular viewers should find this familiar because I've been showing it twice a year for the last three years now. The entire point of this spreadsheet is to predict when my original investment in batteries and solar panels will have paid for themselves. You can see that I have real data now for 2022 through to 2025. If you recall from the last video, I was predicting that my 2025 bill savings would be £2,040. And you can see here it was actually £2,075. That was a reasonably accurate prediction, I think. But either way, it was much better than the £1,659 I originally predicted that I'd been saving that year when I first started this prediction model. In fact, that whole forecast column contains my original forecasts from the first video and that red field in 2030 was my original estimate for breaking even. But as you can see from the data and probably more likely the graph underneath, my current break even estimate is late 2028. So despite an increase in demand, a change in the predicted amount I'll export and a new energy tariff, not much has changed overall since last year when I predicted an early 2029 break-even date. It's been brought forward a little bit by maybe a couple of months, but nothing dramatic. So over the next year then, I think that the energy rates we pay overall are predicted to be pretty static. They're going to go up for a bit in winter and then they'll drop down a bit in the spring. Export rates, I think, will probably go down. There certainly seems to be a trend in that direction from some energy suppliers. So if that happens to me, then I'll have to reassess this in my summer update video. But for now, we are on track for late 2028. So make sure you stay subscribed for free to find out if I'm right. Anyway, don't forget to also give this video a like. And if you're interested in becoming a channel member or Patreon like these amazing people listed here, then check out the links down in the description. In return, you'll get early access to my videos and some bonus content too. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.